Hey guys, Mike Linares here, and welcome to SimpleNursing.com. Before we start today's video, please remember to access your free quiz and preview our cool nifty new study guides not here on YouTube. Click the link right up here at any time during this video. All right guys, let's begin. Okay, now how do antibiotics even work and what's their mechanism of action? So as you see this video right here, most if not all antibiotics work by binding to and destroying this bacterial cell wall, which kills the germ, D-E-A-D, -E dead. The infection explodes like their grenade because all the walls tear down like the walls of Jericho. They just basically collapse like a huge Jenga set. The bug implodes and it's kind of like the bug is squashed. Ugh, look at all that nasty stuff coming out. Nasty. Okay, now the main antibiotics we use for infective endocarditis, and guys, these are the main testable side effects, so guys, write these down. We'll break these down one by one, but let's do a quick overview here. So we have penicillin with a side effect that makes birth control less effective. Vancomycin gives red man syndrome and also mild nephrotoxicity, meaning kidney toxic, and it's commonly used in replace of penicillin allergy. Gentamicin, we have major nephrotoxicity and ototoxicity, known as kidney and ear toxicity. And lastly, ceftriaxone with the brand name Rocephin. This guy causes cholecystitis, aka gallbladder inflammation. All right guys, now let's break these down one by one. Our first antibiotic of choice is usually penicillin, but a bad thing about this a lot of patients have allergies or have some type of drug resistance to the penicillin family. And not to mention, penicillin can cause less effective birth control by bumping the pill and cause accidental pregnancies. So penicillin bumps the pill. So guys, remember P for penicillin, P for pregnancy accidentally. It basically deactivates the pill. So for patient teaching, tell them to use an alternative form of birth control. Get off the pill since it deactivates it and do something else like the Nuvo ring. Okay, now for patients allergic to penicillin, we can give vancomycin, which is from the glycopeptide class. And I have some good news. I just saved a bunch of money by switching my antibiotic to glyco. <laughs> now this guy is notorious for a condition called red man syndrome. It turns the patient like really, really red. Now usually if we give it too fast or if it's given the first dose, this red man syndrome precipitates. We see this as massive flushing of the skin and the patient looks like they have red rashes or hives, usually around the neck and the chest. So guys, if this happens, just stop the infusion. Big NCLEX tip right there. Always stop any infusion that's causing a reaction and then assess the patient's airway. Huge test tip. Now, vancomycin has big toxic side effects like I said before. It has nephrotoxicity, aka kidney toxicity, and also hypotension effects. So we're gonna be checking peaks and troughs during this drug to see how much of it we have in the body. We don't want the patient to have too much and cause it to have too much toxicity inside the kidney. Okay, now next is gentamicin, which sounds very similar to vancomycin, but guys, it's a totally different antibiotic. It's totally different class called an aminoglycoside. Gentamicin has major nephrotoxicity and ototoxicity, meaning that it affects both the kidneys and the ears. And it's kind of a weird phenomenon. Patients report ringing of the ears called tinnitus. So a funny way to remember this is your kidneys are round and shaped kind of like your ears. So when you have ringing of the ears, it could mean you have kidney toxicity. And since vancomycin and gentamicin cause toxicity, we want to monitor those peaks and troughs very closely. Again, peaks meaning high and troughs meaning low. We just want to measure the concentration of the medication inside the body. If it's too high, well, the kidneys could die. Now lastly, ceftriaxone, our brand name is rocephin, in the class of cephalosporin antibiotics which causes inflammation in the gallbladder, something called cholecystitis. Now, patients commonly complain of radiating shoulder pain, which is weird because the gallbladder is near the liver in the upper right of the abdomen. So guys, a big patient teaching is no alcohol, no ETOH with ceftriaxone, since it affects organs near the liver. Now, if the infection or inflammation has destroyed too much of any heart valve, we can always do good old fashioned surgery. This surgery either repairs or replaces the valve itself. Now finally guys, endocarditis patient education. These guys love to show up on the NCLEX and nursing exams as select all that apply questions. So please write these down. We made the acronym MOLD, M-O-L-D, since there's vegetation growth in the heart with infective endocarditis. So M is for monitor for infection. We need to teach the patient to maintain aseptic technique. Thanks for watching. 
For our full video and new quiz bank, click right up here to access your free trial. And please consider subscribing to our YouTube channel. Last but not least, a big thanks to our team of experts helping us make these great videos. Alright guys, see you next time.